There's a subset of third declension nouns that don't quite decline in that same way. These are nouns of feminine, masculine, and neuter gender. But because of the prevalence of the I at the end of their stem, we call them, well, the third declension I stems. Well, actually, it's worth noting that third declension nouns are divided up into consonantal stems, so those with consonants at the end of their base form, and these I stems, those with an I on the end of the base. You see, the five different declensions in Latin are based around these vowel stems. The first declension is for A stems, the second for O stems, their nominative singular was originally an os, the fourth for U stems, and the fifth for E stems. And so this leaves the third for I stems, and for, well, the, the lack of vowels, the consonantal stem. What is traditionally taught as the regular third declension ending, the blank is e m a, ace um ibos acebos, well, these are really the endings for the consonantal stems. The i stem endings are slightly different. The good news, well, not too different. And you can get by reading Latin if you don't really differentiate between these two. From my own experience, it seems like many of the most common third declension words, like dux or tempus, are consonantal stems. So here's how to determine if a third declension noun is an I stem. There are two groups, and I'll deal with each separately. For a masculine or a feminine word, if the nominative ends in an is, and, and here's the key thing, the word is parasyllabic, meaning that there are equal number of syllables in the nominative and genitive singulars. So here's a word, ignis, meaning fire, and its genitive is, well, also ignis. This is masculine, and there are an equal number of syllables, two, in the nominative and genitive. So is hostis, which means enemy, and turris, which means tower. But flos is not, because it doesn't end in an is, and it isn't parasyllabic. Its genitive is two syllables, floris. Neither is reix. Oh, and there are four words that end in an e, r, in the nominative, that are also i stems. So here they are, imber, linter, uter, and wenter. So this group, the stem ends in a short i, so let's take ignis. The stem is this, igne, and we form the nominative by adding an is to the stem, and so that's how we get the is ending in the nominative singular. The genitive likewise forms it with the s ending. The dative works by lengthening this i. The accusative singular originally was an im, so adding an m to the stem, and we still see this with several words, including turris, but over time, it became replaced with a regular M from other third declension nouns. Likewise, the ablative singular was originally a long I, E, but this became replaced with the standard short E of the third declension consonantal stems. In the plural, I stems have the standard ace nominative ending. We retain the stem of the I in the genitive plural, however, so of the citizens would be kiwium, and of the enemies, hostium. The dative and ablative plurals are the standard ibus, but the accusative plural was originally is, not the ace of the third declension consonantal stems. And we see this through even the time of Cicero and Caesar. Only when we move into the new millennium in the Roman Empire does this is form give way to the now more standard ace. Now neuters. If the word is neuter, its nominative case will end in an e, an al, or an ar. So animal, mare, calcar, these are all I stems. Theoretically, the short E was originally a short I, and the all and R endings dropped the I. So we see a lot of the same changes in the singular for these neuter words. Keep in mind that neuter nouns repeat the nominative and accusative. In the ablative singular, the long I is retained, so it isn't in the masculine, feminine I stems. And this will help us with our words like mare, the ablative is mari, not mare. Mare is the, the nominative accusative form. In the plural, the I is retained, not just in the genitive plural, marium, but also in the nominative and accusative. So animalia are animals, calcaria, spurs, and maria, seas. That's the standard introduction to I stems. There's more, though, because language is sloppy, and I'll address this in my next video. Stay tuned.